Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to all my brothers and sisters all around the Muslim world. I love all of you for the sake of Allah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. I begin in the name of Allah and I begin by praising Allah and asking Allah to send salat and salam, peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is another reminder from the DMV Islam page. Alhamdulillah, and the reminder is first to us, always first to us, always first to us. We have enough people in today's time, more than enough. Probably, you know how sometimes you read about uh, statistics, and maybe sometimes uh, statistics say, you know, this is the highest it's ever been. You know, such as poverty is the highest it's ever been, or, you know, this company, this is the highest amount of money they've ever made or you know things like that in today's time I'm certain we have the highest amount of people telling other people to do things that they don't do the highest amount of people telling other people to do good while they themselves don't do it so subhanallah I seek refuge in Allah from not following my own advice and anything we put out it is first to us seriously and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from every form of hypocrisy I mean This reminder is going to be touching on a very, very, very serious issue. Very serious. Because it's, uh, it's going to be regarding a sin, a particular sin. But this has to be one of the most <laughs> non-beneficial sins a person can commit. This has to be the most, the, the, the most non-beneficial sin sin that a person can commit and and this is the sin of pride and arrogance what was the first sin committed the very first sin ever committed what was the first sin ever committed it's in the Quran because Allah tells us about what happened the first sin ever committed was the sin of pride and arrogance this was the sin this was the first sin ever committed and this is a terrible this is the most non beneficial sin uh, after shirk Allahu alam for uh, in my opinion for a human being because subhanallah the, the, the devil or shaitan or iblis or satan whatever you want to call him this was the sin he committed you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told satan to prostrate before Adam alayhi uh, salam he told he told the angels to prostrate. He told them to, to, to the angels to prostrate. He told Iblis to prostrate. Everyone prostrated. Everyone prostrated. Everyone submitted themselves to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except Iblis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, speaks of how he became proud. And when asked, uh, you know, when, when Allah asked uh, Iblis, what, what kept you from prostrating? You know, maybe sometimes you show up late for work and your boss wants to know what kept you. That's what they'll say, right? What kept you? So subhanAllah, Allah says to Iblis, basically, Satan, what what, what has prevented you from, from prostrating? And what is his response? I'm, why, his response to Allah is basically, why are you telling me to prostrate to him? I am better than him. Why are you telling me to prostrate to him? You created him from dust you created me uh, from uh, fire you know fire is, a, is, is, is above dust subhanallah may Allah protect us from this, this sin and crime and because of this sin and crime Satan totally disconnected himself from the mercy and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when a person is proud when a person is proud Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of a proud servant. He is not in need of anything, but this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of. When a person is proud and becomes proud and arrogant, haughty, they think they are better, they think they are above, subhanAllah, this totally separates a person from, from guidance and from mercy. And the reason I say that this is a, the most non-beneficial, you know, of course, after shirk, which is worshipping other than Allah, such as worshipping Jesus or statues and things of this nature, 
the reason I say this is the most non-beneficial sin is because it totally separates a person from the mercy and the forgiveness and the guidance of Allah. How do we get into paradise and avoid hellfire? How? It is by being guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is by being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being proud and arrogant separates us from the guidance and the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who is proud and arrogant will never be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what we have to, of course, uh, know what the definition of pride and arrogance is, and I should have probably start with, started with this. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that pride is to disregard the truth. Someone brings you the truth and you disregard it. And he said pride also is to scorn, look down on people, to despise people. This is pride. And this is something that we suffer from. And it's, again, a terrible calamity because a person who is proud, subhanAllah, a person who is proud will never be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will never be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And their home is hellfire and that is good for them. That is what is best for them because they were proud and they did not accept the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in chapter 37, I shaitan rajim Allah says, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse of how the people who, about people who were proud when it was said to them لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ There is nothing to be worshipped except Allah. Jesus is not to be worshipped. He ate food, he drunk, he became tired, he slept. This is not a God. This is a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A prophet and a mighty messenger, but not a God. So subhanAllah, uh, statues, people, places, things, the sun, the moon, none of these things are worthy of our worship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse about when it was said to these people, uh, you know, La ilaha illallah, nothing has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They became proud. They became proud, so they did. They rejected the truth. They did not submit and believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They continued to be proud and worship other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, they said, you know, no, we want to worship this man and his wealth, and you know, this is what these people. This is this is what happened. This is the, uh, you know, Subhanallah. So, pride is to disregard the, the the truth. If a person comes to you with truth, and you know that it is truth, and you don't accept it and and believe in it. And accept it as truth, this is pride. So may Allah protect us and guide us. I mean, because this can be unintentional sometimes. But when you have the sound knowledge, sound knowledge and sound mind and sound heart, if a person comes to you with the truth, you need to believe in Allah, you need to submit to Allah, and you need to accept it. First, myself. Because subhanAllah, how easy is it when you come to a Muslim brother or a Muslim sister in Islam telling them, you know, bro, Sis, this isn't allowed in Islam. I love you for the sake of Allah, but this isn't allowed. This is a sin. This is haram. This is forbidden. It's not allowed. How many Muslims can we go to and they'll accept that and believe that? No, they'll, they'll argue with you and fight with you and give you a hard time when all you're doing is telling them what Allah said and what the Prophet Muhammad said. This is pride. This is in the hellfire. Pride is in hell. Understand that. When a person comes to you or me with the truth, when we do not accept it and believe in it and be Muslims and obey and submit to the command of Allah, that is in the hellfire. Never do you or me or any of us reject the truth. Ever. If a baby, and I heard a sheikh say this, uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Mufti... Ismail Mufti Mik, Hafidullah, may Allah preserve him. He was saying in one of his lectures, if a baby comes to you with the truth, if the baby's right, that's it. You need to accept it as a blessing. If someone is correcting you and someone is telling you what you're doing is wrong, this isn't correct, I should accept it as guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding me. He is correcting me. Alhamdulillah. Not, not give the brother or sister a hard time and, and no, no, who is this? You know, who are you to tell me? What do you mean? Who are you? What do, what do you mean? Who am I to tell you? You are a number like everyone else. That's what we need to keep in mind. We are numbers like everyone else. And the only one who is above that is a person who is righteous. None of us have any merit or anything special over the other. Except the one who is most obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something we as Muslims have lost. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Stop asking for money. We dream and sleep and think and sweat and go crazy for money. That's, that's all it's about, right? That's all it's about. Stop asking for money for a minute and stop hoping for money for one minute. You, me, all of us. Let's stop asking for money, cars, all this worldly stuff and ask for guidance. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me guidance. Guide me and correct me and put me on the straight path. That's what we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And this is first to myself. I love all of you for the sake of Allah. If you all need any help or assistance, inshallah ta'ala, hit us up on the Facebook, the YouTube. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.